Hey everyone, this is S.M. Pratt, and today we're going to take a look at the first edition Team Rocket set. This set was released in the year 2000 and is pretty significant to the hobby. It was the first to feature a secret rare release, as well as the Dark Pokemon variants. Here's a good example between the Dark Charizard and Standard Base Set Charizard. You'll notice right away the Dark Charizard is literally and figuratively darker than the Base Set release. This was intended. The Dark Pokemon are supposed to be more insidious. In fact, the literal translation from Japanese is Evil Charizard rather than Dark Charizard. And then also all Rocket Pokemon are going to have that iconic R logo present on the cards. One other subtle variation, I'm not sure if anyone's ever pointed this out, but if you take a look here at the border around the actual artwork, it's going to be black or literally dark. And this is present on all Pokemon with the dark prefix. Where any Pokemon that aren't dark, they have that standard yellow gold border. A nice little subtlety that was added in the set. And we'll see even within the Rocket set, the Pokemon that don't have dark present have that standard yellow border as well. So let's get right into it, starting with Dark Alakazam, classic Sugimori artwork. You'll notice right away, the Evolve form of Pokemon are going to have low HP. That's because they are low leveled, perhaps implying impulsivity on the side of Team Rocket. Here is Dark Arbok, one of the popular species from the show that Team Rocket uses. And there's actually an air present on the bottom of this card. If you look at the copyright, it says 1999 to 23,000. That should be 1999 to 2,000. Nonetheless, this is present on all of the first edition release. Then you have the Dark Blastoise. I would say a pretty iconic card from the set. Very popular with Blastoise collectors like myself. In fact, this pose is kind of reminiscent of the CD promo, except he's turned the other way. Maybe that's his magnet moment right there, finally turning left. And then you have Dark Charizard. Definitely the most valuable card in the set. Typically, anytime you put a Charizard in a set, it's usually going to be most valuable. And that is definitely true for Rocket. Something that's interesting about this Charizard, it has 80 HP. I remember that was very odd to me when I was younger because the base set Charmeleon had 80 HP. So it had the same amount of HP as the previous Valve form. But again, it's highlighting that low level where you can see here the level is 38. And the base set Charizard is literally double that at level 76. And then moving into the Dark Dragonite, I would say this is also a popular Pokemon in general and this is somewhat of a standout card in the set there's a very very difficult air to find where the numbering of five out of 82 has a non-holographic background that is significantly more difficult to find than the standard holographic version and then moving to doug trio classic himeno right here i guess is what dark doug trio would do just break into someone's place and then you got dark golbat dark gyarados probably looking a little derpy that should be derp gyarados in my opinion and then you have Dark Hypno, which is kind of redundant. I would say pretty much any Hypno card is inherently dark. And then you have Dark Machamp. A nice twist on the somewhat sterile base set Machamp because base set Machamp was so available back in the day. And then Dark Magneton's very interesting. Dark Magneton is that unicorn card that is present in every set. This was that card that was extremely difficult to grade. For the longest time, this card was the lowest in the pop report by a wide margin for any comparable holographic card. I think it earned about $1,000 at its peak, but nonetheless, this is the most difficult card to grade for sure. Also, the artwork's pretty decent. Got a nice silhouette there in the background. And speaking of the silhouette in the background, you have it here as well with Slowbro. I remember back in the day, that was a huge deal to see some, just something in the background. Then you got Dark Valplume and the bane of this set's existence. This is the most lackluster holographic card hands down, in the set, and one of the worst in the entire hobby. I mean, look at the contrast. Let me just scroll up here. Look at all that holographic happening on Dark Mag Magneton. Then we're going to scroll right back down. It's like, what the heck is going on here, Weezing? This this little one in the background is just trolling everybody. He knows what he's doing. So this is the worst holographic card by far for the amount of holographic pattern that you can actually uh, perceive or decipher. I remember back in the day, I pulled like three of these, and it was so disappointing. And then moving into Here Comes Team Rocket, you got to have actual Team Rocket in the Team Rocket set. This was a secret rare in the Japanese release, and I remember back in the 90s, early 2000s, it was a big deal when everyone found out about this because you finally saw Jesse James and Meowth in the set. But nonetheless, I would say it's a pretty iconic card, and there you go. Classic Team Rocket has to be included. Rocket Sneak Attack, and then finishing it off with the Holographic Rainbow Energy. And I'm going to kind of breeze through some of these rare non-holographic versions. I'll stop on a couple where you can appreciate the background. Something like Himeno is a good example. You can really appreciate the background that Himeno focused on. Where if you look 
right next to it. This is what you saw typically with Arita and Sugimori in the beginning is you'd have somewhat of like a Sears portrait backdrop, like a studio shot going on. And then Jimeno was one of the first to really expand on the illustrations background. See a little bit more there, Dark Hypno. I think, in my opinion, the Dark Magneton is really a stark contrast. Let me see if I can put them next to each other here. You see the difference there with the holographic version. You couldn't even see any of that typical like late 90s, early 2000s stylized background. So there you go. It's a pretty significant difference there. And then you can see a little bit more of the silhouette with the Dark Slowbro. And then finishing off again. Is this holographic? Is this not holographic? We'll just never know. Getting into the uncommon commons, as I mentioned in other videos, these are really speaking to me right now. And Dark Charmeleon completely captures exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, this is just literally and figuratively fire. Like, this is pure quality. This card, even PSA 10, is not going to break the bank. In my opinion, this is the strongest Charmeleon artwork in the Watsi era. Just delivers so much. And again, an uncommon card. So there you go. Starting off strong with Dark Charmeleon. Moving to Dark Dragonair. Then you have Dark Electrode. And I like how they include the evolutions. I like how they have a little, you know, dark... It, and it's cost-effective as well as being an uncommon card for any EV collector out there. So you got the Dark Flareon. A little Grimace on his face. Then you got Dark Gloom. In my opinion, this is my favorite Golduck card when we're talking about Watsi era releases. It's just pure quality. I know it's not the first one released, but this artwork is just iconic through and through. And again, not that expensive. And then moving on, we got Dark Jolteon. I know Gem Mint Pokemon's favorite is the Jungle release, but I think this one is a decent second. Got to have that electricity. Go. One of the OG cards that have the lightning bolts in the background, but with a purpose. And this card is unfortunate. It was actually the end of the Kadabra line. It wasn't the literal last Kadabra card released, but because of this specific card, there was a lawsuit against Pokemon by the lovely Yuri Geller. Go ahead and Google him. He's a complete douchebag mag magician who sued Pokemon because, as I mentioned before, the prefix in Japanese was evil. So this roughly translated to evil Yuri, that guy Ben Spoons. Apparently Ben Spoons with his mind. No one has told him that's much easier to do it with your hands. But nonetheless, that guy sued Pokemon, and now there aren't any more cadaver cards that will be released. So that is an unfortunate history that is because specifically of that card. And then moving into Dark Machoke, Great example of the dark Pokemon anger, frustration, doing a little roid rage right here. Remember this one when we get into Neo Destiny. I'll try. I'll mention it when we talk about Neo Destiny because it's a good contrast in the dark and the light release later on. And then we have Dark Muck. I don't know if it's in a cage. It's kind of that uh, first-person shooter effect going on here with the, the mud on the screen. They got Dark Persian. Dark Primate's interesting because this was one of the cards that was literally featured in the show. This, If you actually Google it, this exact card, or the artwork at least was depicted in the actual anime, which is very rare. That doesn't happen that often. But nonetheless, there you go. That's Dark Primate. Dark Rapid Rapidash, very similar to the Charmander. We'll see eventually, but again, definitely angry. Everybody's angry in all these cards. You got Dark Vaporeon to finish off the Evolution line. And then we have Dark Wartortle. Again, very low HP. And then we got Magikarp and then Porygon to finish off the Uncommons. Moving into the Commons, you're going to see again more dynamic artwork this is going to be kazuki kazuki is very strong in my opinion this is kazuki's breakout set where i'd say jimeno's breakout set was jungle this is definitely kazuki's breakout set and you could just see right away look at this artwork very unique especially for the time then you got charmander dark radicate you know you're not a good species when your evolved form is still in the common line and then you got diglett here again another example of kazuki look at this unique art is this surrealism? Is this Salvador Dali? Is that a car flying in the background? Like, what is this? Is this town for ants? It's like, how big is this diglet? Nonetheless, quality, unique artwork. And you'll see this style occur over and over again. You'll see a couple more examples where you have a similar style to that diglet card. And then you got Dratini, Drowsy, and then you got to have Eevee if you got all the Eevee Lucians. Ekans, one of the Team Rocket anime Pokemon. And Grimer's interesting. This Grimer is actually the. American release, the puritanical American release, where in Japan, the pupils of Grimer were angled, looking up underneath the skirt that was walking in front of him. So Grimer was being a little bit more grimy in the Japanese release, but by the time it was released in English, he calmed down a little bit. So now the pupils have adjusted. But definitely one of them, I would say, a very subtle air. It doesn't have much monetary value, but a nice little story behind it. 
And then coughing really encapsulates that style I was mentioning earlier with Diglett. Here it is again with Kazuki. You see that coloration, that style, that format. Then you got Machap. And then this nice little Magnemite. Then we got Mankey here with the strong black lines. Kazuki again. The Meowth to me was a little bit lackluster. I thought they were going to do something a little bit more unique with the Team Rocket Meowth. But nonetheless, there is the Team Rocket set Meowth. And then you got Oddish with his little pet frog. And getting to the last of the species, we have Ponyta, and then Psyduck, and then Rattata, and then the Slowpoke right here. This was the first Rocket card I ever experienced. I remember being on the baseball field, and a kid bought this right when it was released in Japan, or at least when the store got in stock. And this was my first experience with Team Rocket. Again, very unique style. I think for people who don't understand why I keep emphasizing on this style, is that back in the day, you only really had that somewhat sterile Pokemon and then that backdrop. So this was just a whole nother layer. I was like, whoa, this is a different impression. I never saw this before because all we, we knew at the time was Sugimori. So this was a complete left turn. And now today you can really appreciate that difference. And then you got Squirtle, Voltorb, and then finishing it off for the species with Zubat. And here are a couple of the non-holographic versions of the holographic cards we saw earlier. Then you have the Boss's Way. And some of these trainer cards are going to have that same style I mentioned earlier. You can see a little bit of Kazuki style in the coloring. This looks similar to that car that was flying there in the Diglett photo. Very similar theme going on. Imposter's Oak Revenge. Nightly Garbage Run. Again, Kazuki delivering kazuki delivering <laughs> it's like let's get one more kazuki delivering kazuki is just all over the place in this set and i think it re they did a really good job of delivering a nice impression and then finishing off last but not least couple energies and then the secret rare that i mentioned earlier this was the first secret rare released in a main stage set in fact english did it before japanese you heard that correct english actually released something before Japan. I mean, this is... Talk about unicorns. This was it right here for the English side in general. This was the first Secret Rare release, and English was on top of things, as you could tell at the bottom. 83 out of 82. So, again, the first Secret Rare. Only one. Not 100 like you have today. But there you go. That is the Team Rocket set. Let me know what you think about this set. Let me know what your favorite cards were. Let me know your experiences you had with it. I think, in my opinion, it's very iconic for the hobby and very, very, uh, I would say, easy on the wallet. It's just something that you can buy today. I would hesitate there because if you go for the PSE 10s, they have climbed a little bit. But at the end of the day, even with that said, it's still something that's very affordable. And I think it delivers a nice moment in the hobby and a unique identity. So there you go, guys. Let me know your thoughts. And that's pretty much it. Till next time.